Lord, this morning.
seated real quick. My name's Dominic Raff. I'm one of the pastors here. And it's just super, I'm just excited because it's Sunday. You know me. Whenever I get up here, I'm always like, dude, it's Sunday. We get to hang out. We get to worship together. We get to dive into the word. We get to pray together. And it's a special day because it is a concert of prayer. And we'll be diving into what that looks like a little bit more. But we, as a church, exist to reintroduce vibrant, selfless Christianity to the greater Holbrook area. And we do that through three things. We do through caring for our community, caring for uh, caring for people. We connect with those people. We connect together as a church. And then we celebrate what God has done in the past week when we were caring and when we were connecting and what he's going to do in this upcoming week. So guys, just be, I mean, I don't know about you, but whenever I think about singing praises to God, there's just something that's like, it, it's our heart singing. You know, are we actually singing these lyrics and thinking about what they're singing? Or are we just going through the motions? And I want to encourage you that as a body, we get to have an almighty fortress that goes before us and nothing stands against him. And that is the God that we're singing to, the God that we're going to be praying to. So I'm going to kick us off with prayer. We're going to dive into worship and let's be excited. So Father God, it just, you are an almighty fortress. You do go before us and nothing can stand against you. And in this, I pray that we as a people are just confident that we can walk into what you've called us to, into, whether it's um, an uncomfortable thing or whether it's stepping out in faith, God. I pray that we are a people that just loves to see you come through every single time in your own way. So I pray that we're not looking for results that we wanna see, but we're looking for the results that you're gonna give us through the fruit that you're gonna give us. And I pray, God, that we would be a people on our knees begging for revival, begging that you would would just ignite our hearts with a love for you and a love for your word and to tell other people about it and that the community would see this body right here and say, I want what they have. And that's you, a relationship with our almighty fortress. Bless the rest of this gathering. May it glorify you. And in Jesus Christ's name, amen. All right, let's rise and continue in song. Shining in the light of your glory 
Your blood covers it. We thank you, Lord, that you make them as white as snow. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, Lord, and for your forgiveness. And God, we cry out to you that we need you, Lord. We need you in our lives. We need you in our church. God, we need you. We pray, Lord, that you would be with us today, Lord, as we look to the future and what you have for our church, Lord, that you would open our hearts to see what you have for us, would open our hearts, would open our time, Lord, that we would be there to be used by you in any way, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you are doing through us. Thank you, God, for allowing us to be a light in the community. And we pray, Lord, that many would see your light and would come to you as a result. We thank you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, sometimes right about now, I forget to say something. Demetrius? What, what, what do I forget to say? <laughs> Demetrius, you want to come up here and say it? <laughs> Kids can go downstairs, right? Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> next, next time you can say it up here, okay? <laughs> yeah, kids can go down. Kids, uh, K through fifth, go downstairs and uh, enjoy Jesus together. Uh, so, a couple things to keep us all on the same page, which is hard to do because <laughs> there's so many of us. Uh, on February 25th, we have two different things, which is really cool. One in the morning at nine o'clock in Abington for men, a men's breakfast. And in the afternoon on, on February 25th, 3 to 5, it's an axe throwing contest or whatever. I'm glad I won't be there. The first one is safe for men, the second one, maybe not. Uh, anyway, for that one, see Pam Carpenter. Uh, contact Pam Carpenter, she's waving her hand, and if you don't know how to contact her, contact me or Dom or somebody else, we'll connect you with her. You can also find Pam Carpenter on your Brookville app. There's a directory in there, you can go in there and see her and connect with her. Uh, let's see, what comes next, what do we have next? We got, uh, oh yeah, uh, right after church today, right after this gathering time today, and next week, we have a marriage purpose class. Today, Phil and, uh, Phil and Lorraine are leading it. So it's back the hall, last room on the left. We call it the prayer room. Uh, that's right after church today. Also right after church today, we have purgatory, which is where we go out here and eat donuts and stuff and talk to one another. So I'll, I'll mention both of those at the end as well. I also want to talk about Holbrook Court yesterday. We had a Col Holbrook Court Valentine's Day event, Valentine's event yesterday, and uh, God worked. Relationships were built, people were, um, uh, relationships were furthered, and a lot of people got food that they needed, and we just, we just have, it's really just such a wonderful, um, uh, big relationship that we have between Brookvillers and Holbrook Court, so God really blessed that yesterday. Also on that note, be praying. Um, today's going to be a day of prayer. Be praying today, in this gathering. Uh, when it, whenever you want to pray, remember to pray for what's ahead. Uh, God is gonna. God has all kinds of things ahead for us as a church this year. In the summer, uh, April two, we have the egg hunt event for um, everybody in the area and uh, for all the kids to come to. So be praying for those things. And then uh, last thing, what's the last thing? I should. Uh, yeah, there we go. The youth takeover. So invite your youth. Any youth you know of. Um, if you feel really youthful, but if you identify as youth, but maybe you're not youthful, talk to Dom about that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is why I have to say that. Uh, but this is at the gym in Abington, uh, at, at um, First Baptist Church in Abington, and, and you know we're partnering together. Love that. So come to that. Uh, we're in a series now where we're we're calling it Facing the Future. Two weeks ago. Uh, Two or three weeks ago, Don talked about being confident in the future and that the future affects how we live now, right? Our future as Christians. Last week, we talked about the state, we did the state of the church address. We talked about what God has been doing, what he is doing, what he will be doing. You know, 
Dom mentioned earlier when he came up here, um, was kicking us off with a welcome. He mentioned, you know, that that third one is celebrate. We celebrate what God has done. And that is true. However, there are some of us here today that don't really feel like celebrating. We've had a lot of hard knocks. The secret is, though, for any of you, and I know not all of you are in Christ Jesus, but for every one of you who is trusting in Christ Jesus, there is nothing that can take away our celebration. Nothing. He is all we need. He is our joy. He is our reward. He's our crown. The absolute worst can happen to us and around us here in the earth, in our lives. And for the Christian who's in love with Jesus and focused on Jesus, kind of doesn't matter. So that's really what we're focusing on today. We're focusing on Jesus. This whole gathering time from now until the closing song is going to be prayer. I forewarned you last week, come prepared, don't be shy. If you're too shy to pray, you trust me, you are not going to be called upon to pray. Nobody has to pray that doesn't want to. But we want as many of you to pray as want to. We'll pass the mic around and we'll be leading you through praise and repenting and asking and yielding to God's will, surrendering yourself to God's will, and then thankfulness. Uh, the asking one, I want to mention something in particular on the asking one. That's the middle one. Braley will be leading that. The asking one. Praying for people's physical needs is huge and very important. Not diminishing that. But what I want to call you Brookvillers to, us Brookvillers to, when we get to that asking phase today and in our own prayer lives, yes, pray for people's physical needs, physical needs which are many, are many, but have a bigger picture than that. Pray for the movement of the Holy Spirit of God among us, which he is, among our community, among everything we touch. May we be like King Midas, where everything we touch is sanctified with Holy Spirit power. Pray for the year ahead, for where God is sending us as a church. Lay the groundwork through prayer. When we talk about asking, don't think small. Think big. Pray like a child. Pray for what God's going to do in the future. To guide us through these five sections of prayer, we're going to be looking at the story of Habakkuk, one of my favorite books. Maybe it's a little known book. It's only three chapters in the old, towards the end of the Old Testament. So let me give you a brief overlay of the story of Habakkuk. Habakkuk starts out in the first chapter, which we're not going to read any of, where the prophet is really belly aching. He, and he, he, his heart is broken. And he is looking at the, his countrymen, his, his, the world around him, and he is saying, oh my goodness, God, what in the world is happening? Our, my world, our world, the people I love is going to hell in a handbasket all around me. Now, I think we can identify with that. Even the most optimistic among us, I'm one of them, can identify with that. Wow. Wow, what is happening in the world around us? And he's calling on God, and he's saying, God, and we see injustice all around us. He's, he's particularly, the prophet Habakkuk is saying, God, you're a righteous God. How in the world can you stand by? How can you, how can you tolerate this? How in the world can you, can you stand there quietly and not hugely intervene? Why isn't your fist just smash, smashing the globe? What is going on here? And that's what he's doing in chapter 1. And then we get to chapter 2. And in chapter 2, he starts to see a little bit of God's overarching plan, which is bigger than the injustice he sees around him. We'll be reading some of that. I'm going to kick us off with that in a minute. And then when we get to chapter 3 of Habakkuk, when we get towards this, the last couple of verses, which Phil is going to read, are some of my favorite verses in the Bible. We get to the end, and basically Habakkuk is saying, even if the sky actually does fall, even if the oceans actually do cover all the land on the earth, it doesn't matter. You are my rock and my salvation. You make my feet secure. I trust in you. And Habakkuk says at the end, no matter what happens, I will rejoice in God my Savior. 
for the Christian, for those of you who are not in Christ Jesus, I can't speak to you. Um, for those of us who are in Christ Jesus, we can always be rejoicing, even in the worst. So for this first section of prayer, let's focus on praising. Now, if you want to mix it up and pray something else, fine. I'm, we're not, I'm not going to zap you or something. Um, maybe God will. I don't know. But uh, no, this section, focus on praising. And when we talk about praising, we're telling God, I know it sounds a little weird. Just do it. We're telling God what we like about him. This is what I tell like Gabe or something when we're, when we're going through this. What do you like about God? What, what about God? Is, it, is it, it, it just amazes you and fills you with wonder, fills you with joy. And that's what this section is right now. So let me read Habakkuk 2, 2 through 5, kick us off with the prayer, and then be prepared after my prayer. I'm going to pass it around to anybody who raises their hand, and you can praise. Don't go hugely long because otherwise, sorry, I can't see. Uh, don't go hugely long because otherwise other people won't get the chance. But please raise your hand and praise God. So Habakkuk 2, verse 2, he says, Then the Lord said to me, Write my answer plainly on tablets, so that a runner can carry the correct message to others. This vision is for a future time. It describes the end, and it will be fulfilled. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently, for it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. Look at the proud. They trust in themselves, and their lives are crooked. But the righteous will live by their faithfulness to God. In this moment, Father, we want to praise you that the righteous will live by faith. Certainly not by any of our own goodness or ability. We live by faith. We rejoice that you have set that up by sending your son to die on the cross and rise again for us. We put our faith wholly in you. We praise you that even when things really are really terrible, we can rejoice in you. We praise you that your will is unconfounded. Your will will happen. Even if it is slow in coming, it will not be delayed. It will be fulfilled. You are in full control. We praise you for that. We take great comfort and security in it because we know that you're not malevolent. You are good. You love us. You loved us with your only begotten son. And you are in full control. And we rest in it and feel secure in it. Our faith is in that. And when we rejoice because things are really great in our lives, even then, our eyes are not drawn to the things that are really great. Our eyes are drawn back in rejoicing in you. Who would like to praise God? Father, I just praise you and thank you for your faithfulness, your goodness, your kindness to us uh, as a church body. And Father, I praise you and thank you for your faithfulness to Holbrook. That over 150 years ago, you established the body of Christ here. And I'm sure even before that, Father, you, your Holy Spirit worked in this town. And Father, I thank you and praise you that you're still working here. That we still see people being introduced to Christ. We still see people finding life. Father, we praise you and thank you that you would use us. Father, we thank you and praise you for your kindness. Father, that even when we don't deserve these things, you still lavish your presence, and your power, and your kindness, and your faithfulness to us. We just praise you and thank you because you're worthy, worthy above all things, Father. We just praise you and thank you for your incredibly deep love for us. Oh, Lord God, you said we should come into your house with praise and thanksgiving into your courts. With praise, we are here, Father, together to worship you because you, not to worship you because we want something, but because you deserve it. You are so good to us. You're so kind. You're so patient to us. Lord, thank you so much for your mercies. Thank you for your grace. Father, we just glorify you. We worship you. We honor you. 
Father, we bow before you. There are so many ways we can be in position of prayer. On our knees, we thank you, Lord. With standing with our arms lifted high, we worship and adore you because you are Lord of Lord and King of Kings. The great I am, a merciful healer, gentle savior. Thank you so much for who you are. Glory be to your name, Lord. We pray the mothers, pray the God, people who care about us to celebrate Valentine's Day, to people who connect to sharing from our parents. We can survive. We can't do anything else to our parents. Very, very sad, I understand, because we were, like, emotional. Very, very happy to see my mom again. We miss you guys a lot. We really do. I want to pray for my son, Billy. He has throat cancer. He has throat cancer, and he has had seven procedures with it. But he's coming along, and I, I'm pretty sure he's going to make it. The Lord is with him, keep by his side and helping him with this terrible long distance of, of, of cure. But I'm with the Lord. Amen. We give that prayer prayer to you, God. God, I want the pray to help me better understand you. I'm trying to read. I can't understand. I need help, God, because you're the answer. And I pray that I have troubles. I read the Bible. I can't figure it out, God. I'm, I need help understanding what you want for my life. And thank you so much. God bless The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O God. Thank you, Lord, that you have chosen us to be with us. Lord, you could have looked on us and say, you dirty, sinful people, but you chose to give up your life to cover all our sins and Lord, we thank you for this. Lord, we thank you for making us look brand new to God. And we can be a part of God's family. Lord, thank you for this love. And I pray, oh God, that if there are people here who have not accepted your love, that they'll realize that this is free to us because you already paid for it. Lord, we just want to thank you for that. And thanks for making us God's prized possession. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Lord, I just want to say thank you, like, for being here. Like, like you, like, your awesomeness is just answering my prayers whenever you can especially for my best friend, Kiara. Like, I hope you can just watch over her for me. Like, hope that she can come back to the program and healthy and safe. Like, please help the doctors know, like, like help her, like, like heal her. Like, I know you, you, like, you've been there for me ever since that I was sick, like, whenever a loved one was sick, especially in this lovely house. That's all I have to say, amen. Father God, I praise you for your goodness to us, for your faithfulness, for your word, for your promises that are always true. I thank you, Father, that you can turn even the worst situations. And we look at examples in the, in the Bible, with Daniel in the lion's den and, and Joseph um, being sold into slavery and the story of Job, that you can turn the worst situations into glorious situations. And I thank you, Father, for the trials that we do face because those trials do develop perseverance. And I have to say that these past two years, almost going through the brain cancer, has been probably one of the most exciting spiritual times that I have ever had. 
because so many people have heard about your goodness and it has changed lives. And I know, Father, that you have plans for us, plans to prosper, not to harm us, plans to give us hope in the future, no matter what the situation, that you can turn into good. And I thank you and praise you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. All right, Barry. Okay, we're going to uh, do some repentance now. And I'm going to start off by reading uh, from Habakkuk uh, 2, 13, 14. Say, um, sorry. <laughs> when facing an uncertain future, we are wise to notice our smallness and frailty, to confess to God the ways that we have sinned, and to be filled with a healthy reverence of his awesome holiness and glory. Over the next few minutes, confess your sin, or on behalf of others, or our nation, or confess sin to God privately in your hearts. I'll start us off. Father, I have loved ones. I have, I have a family that I love very much. And for unbeknownst reasons to me, uh, I am not receiving uh, love back. But in fact, I am receiving rejection. And I have forgiven them for that. But as the years pass, and I pray for reconcil reconciliation. My, re my, my intolerance of the situation and my anger grow and my sin nature shouts that I should reject them as well. Uh, but I can't and I won't. Uh, they have, they have prevented us from sharing our lives and they've prevented me from sharing the gospel with them which they sorely need and that I will continue to pursue. Father, I just, uh, I repent for this and I, I pray for your forgiveness and your victory over this situation in Jesus' name. Father, you know that the biggest sins I struggle with are pride and envy. And Father, I just ask you to forgive me, Father, for the sins that I come to you with every day, the thoughts that I think, the things that I do that are wrong, and that I confess to you, Father. I just thank you for the blood of Jesus. And Father, for the things that I haven't confessed, the things that I don't know of, that come to the front of my mind, God, I, I ask for your forgiveness. I love you, Lord, and I am really sorry because I really do love you, and I really do want to please you, not because I have to, but because I want to. And so, Father, I just thank you for forgiveness in your holy name. I know this is a sticky one, and that's okay. You can, do you want it? Okay. You can be... Uh, repenting in your heart, too. Oh, Lord, my God, my Savior. I come before you, Father God, and I pray and ask you to help us, to help me. I look into myself, Lord, and I come before you and ask you for your help, for your Holy Spirit to show me the things that I need to work on. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for that, Father. I thank you that you can tell me and allow me to see myself before you. Father, I, I know for myself, when I draw closer to you, that's when I realize how sinful, how wretched I can be. 
And I know from the beginning of this year, I had come before and asked you, Lord, that help me not to let any divisive spirit, any gossip, any um, envy, any this anger or impatience of others or intolerance of others um, be a part of my life. Lord, I know for sure that when we desire to be righteous, you will help us because it is in your will. It is in your grace. Father, like Nehemiah, come before you, Lord God, and ask for forgiveness for the entire Israelite nation. Lord, I ask you, Lord, for forgiveness of our church, of our Oldbrook, of our Brockton, of our New England, Father God. People become so selfish, so absorbed with themselves, easily offended, easily angered, <laughs> will not be of your mind. Help us to be, that our thoughts will be your thoughts. You said whatever, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are pure. When someone whisper a lie and Satan feeds us with something, Help us to realize, help us to see him coming. You said your sheep hear your voice. Help us, Lord, if we are your sheep. Help us to desire, Will you will not force yourself on any of us. Help us to desire you so that every day we will live intentionally in repentance. Father, one of the things that I desire the most, that wherever I am, Father, in my house without anyone watching, that my life is for you. Amen. Wherever I am, Father, if I fill out something and I did everything right and I go uh, at the interview or the appointment and it is not there, let me not be angered. Let me not be impatient. Help us not to be so impatient, but to trust you in everything. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you that we can come to you that we do not have to wait for Sean, for a priest, for someone to take our sins to you, to come to you. Oh, great, oh, awesome that is, to be able to talk to you everywhere, anywhere, all the time, every time. And God, I'd, I'd confess some of the things you know in me, Lord, that nobody else does, that I, uh, some of my frequent sins are talking about other people, are trying to control situations around me and other people around me, things that I fear more than you. Instead of, instead of focusing on you, I get afraid. And I let fear consume me. Oh God, I, I confess these sins to you. Work in me. Braley? Where is Braley? There you are. So verses 18 through 20, what good is an idol carved by man or a cast image that deceives you? How foolish to trust in your own creation, a God that can't even talk. What sorrow awaits you who say to wooden idols, wake up and save us. To speechless stone images you say, rise up and teach us. Can an idol tell you what to do? They may be overlaid with gold and silver, but they are lifeless inside. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. So um, before I really say anything about that, I just want to tell everyone about something that I'm doing at my school that is really um, exciting, but I definitely need prayer about it. So I'm starting a Bible study club at my school. <laughs> And I'm very excited. Um, I kind of was inspired in September, but didn't really like gather the courage until October. So I emailed my principal and after very little communication and a lot of waiting, um, things are finally getting into you know action. But I just wanted to touch on some things that kind of happened before that. But um, 
So even just a few weeks ago, there's just this one week during school where I was like so stressed with school. I had like so many assignments. I had a essay due at the end of the week and I hadn't started until Wednesday. <laughs> Don't tell my mom. And so that was like, that was, it was just so chaotic. But so I just went back to the verse, um, Philippians 4, 6 through 7 you know, don't worry about anything, instead pray about everything. And so every morning I just woke up and I just prayed over that verse. And I really did become more at peace, you know, like I would go to my homework and I was like, okay, the second I get stressed, I'm just gonna pray about it. So all throughout this time, I'm waiting for this email from my principal where before he had said, okay, it's a go, but we just need to meet in person to go over like legal requirements. So during this week where I'm slowly gaining my peace and just like a closeness with Jesus, I get the email and I'm like freaking out. And so I got on a Wednesday, it was gonna be Thursday afternoon. So I'm sitting in the office, like waiting to go into his room and my stomach is literally turning. Like I cannot even, I was like, my heart was beating so fast, similar to how I feel right now. (laughs) And so I just was like, okay, you know what? I've had such a stressful week and the Lord has brought me to this verse. And because I had been reading it every morning, I kind of had it like memorized in a small way. So I was just sitting in the office like, okay, don't worry about anything. I said, pray about everything. What, am I, what do I need right now? Because the Lord says, bring me, like, tell me what you need. So I was like, okay, I need peace and I need confidence because I'm talking from my principal about something that could be like very controversial and I'm just really nervous. So I go in there once I've been like praying and stuff, they call my name and I walk in, he has the biggest smile on his face. Like I'm telling you, the biggest smile was the most welcoming thing to walk into. And then he's telling me about his faith, you know, his, his Christian life and mine. And we just have such a beautiful moment. And I was like, wow, like the Lord is here. I don't even need to invite him in. Like he's already here, but just having this like closeness with him is so important and asking what you need, like, like, yes, the Lord will provide for you, but almost like asking what you need, it brings you to terms like with what you need, right? Like I needed peace, I needed to understand that it doesn't have to be up to me, like I can trust God with the situation. So um, I just wanna start, off, start us off in prayer for that. Um, so yeah. <laughs> um, dear Jesus, Lord, I just pray that um, people here that are seeking you, Lord, would find you. Um, Jesus, touch our hearts, Lord. Um, a life without you is no life at all, Jesus. So I just pray that we would have a revival of you, Lord, um, that when it comes to seeking you and understanding what we need in this life, Lord, that we wouldn't be afraid to ask and we'd have confidence and come to you, Lord, um, despite all all our far- faults, Lord. <laughs> Maybe not farts. Um, <laughs> despite all our faults and our sins, Lord, you tell us to boldly come to you, Jesus. So I just pray for confidence, Lord. Um, And just love in that moment. Jesus, thank you so much. We pray over Braley and that effort that you would work there in that school in Whitman. Father, we do praise you and thank you for what you're doing uh, with Braley and through her and in that school. We just pray that your Holy Spirit would fill that place. And Father, as as our town goes, Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit would just flood Holbrook Court. Father, we thank you for the relationships that you've built over there. We just ask that we would see the fruit of lives changed, that they would know the joy of the Lord, that they would sing, what a mighty God we have, what a faithful God we have. And Father, we pray that they would be a light to our community, that what happens when you let God into a place what a blessing it could be. And Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit would flood this town. Father, we pray that you protect this town from the evil one, that any avenues, any strongholds that he has here, Father, we pray that you would release them, break them, that you would remove him from this place. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit would fill Holbrook. Father, we pray that Holbrook would be the start of a revival in New England. We pray, Father, that you would do a mighty work. Father, all our efforts, all our abilities, all our skills, all our dreaming and thinking, Father, cannot make this happen. But your Holy Spirit, your power, your glory can really make this happen. Father, may we get to see this. May we get to be part of it. May we get to see the mighty hand of God move like we've read about, like we've heard about. May we see something that we've never seen before. 
And may it start here in Holbrook. We ask that you'd be glorified in all these things in Jesus' name. Let it be. I'll come back to you. <laughs> Dear God, I pray for that you will protect the people in in Syria and Turkey with the earthquakes. And I pray that you will pr protect the people in this country um, because sometimes bad things happen. And I pray that you protect my friends and my family. And I pray that you um, uh, h help people uh, come to your word. And, and I pray that um, you will help make this country a safe place for everyone. Amen. <laughs> Dear God, I come to you this morning asking you to help us, your children, to prioritize you more. Lord, you've blessed us with gifts and talents and jobs and all sorts of things, and we use them as excuse to be too busy to serve in your kingdom. Lord, I pray that for those of us whose hearts you've touched to do things, I ask, oh God, that you'll give us the boldness to go do it and just get it done in your name. Lord, I pray for the, the fields that you've opened for persons, oh God. I pray that you'll strengthen them and continue to encourage them to be bold especially in this environment where people don't seem to like to hear about you. But Lord, we are thankful that we can be that little glimpse into who you are. So help us, oh God, to be like you so that when people see us, they will see you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Heavenly Father, watch over us, protect us, keep us safe. In Jesus' name, I pray. Lord, I thank you and I praise you for Brookville Bible Church. God, I think it was eight, nine, ten years ago we were disintegrating and we could have cease to exist, but by your grace and your mercy, Lord, you chose to work through us and bring us back to life. God, and I thank you and praise you for the revival that you've brought here, Lord, and I pray that all of our hearts are just seeking to spread your word, Lord, not to fill the seats in this room, God, but to fill heaven with your children, and Lord, we look forward with excitement and anticipation of what you're going to do, Lord, in us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. I don't know if you've noticed so far, but we did praise. Starts with what letter? P. P. We did repent. Starts with what letter? We did ask. Starts with what letter? Okay. And the next one is Y, yield. So pray. That's something you can remember is praise, repent, ask, yield. So Dom... Ed Phil, I apologize. I'm going to pull an audible. Um, we'll close with you. Yeah, sure. Could you read Phil's Habakkuk passage and do yield? What was that? 317 to. Yeah, Phil, you, you, you guys can do this together. You read that your passage, you close us in yield, okay? Uh, I also want to mention. You have all been prayed over already today. This gathering has been prayed over already today. The music team has been prayed over already today. The kids downstairs right now have been prayed over already today. And I ask you to join us each Sunday to do that. We meet back in the prayer room, the whole way back on the left, the prayer room, at 9 o'clock. We pray from 9 o'clock to 9.30 on Sunday mornings. Join us. It's the power of God that is going to do all this and is doing all this. There's no way we could even want to try 
to orchestrate any of this. It's all the power of God. Join us from 9 to 9.30 on Sundays. Be regular prayers there. Do the P-R-A-Y thing at home with your spouse, with your friends, in your small groups. Wednesday nights from 7 to 8. Again, it's old and tired now, but in the prayer room. Back the hall on the left in the prayer room from 7 to 8. So on Sunday mornings, we call that half hour power of prayer. And on Wednesday nights, we call that seven to eight hour of prayer. Um, and hour of prayer, we pray over everything that God is doing and everything that is happening. So join us for that as well. That one you can also join by Zoom. All right. Uh, so I'll hand it to you. You read the Habakkuk passage. And Dom, you close it with yield. And then at a certain point, uh, the music team will come up and close us. All right, so um, I'm Phil McCartan, by the way, and an elder on the governing council. Uh, this is a great passage, you know. Habakkuk has gone through, and his nation has gone through, some times more terrible than anything that we've gone through, as hard as times are now. And now God has spoken to him and said, I am in control, fear not. And here's some beautiful passages from the end of Habakkuk, verses 17 through 19. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are <clears throat> no grapes on the vines. Though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food. Though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. So God, we just come before you and we thank you that you are reigning on high. We thank you so much that we can just come in, that we can come into your courtrooms and submit to you in this yielding process, God. I just pray that we recognize who you are, that though things, uh, though things around us may be falling apart, we worship the almighty God that is on the throne, that is in control, that, um, that's going to produce the fruit that he ultimately knows is best. And I pray as a church that we walk into the works that you prepared beforehand for us and that we know that all things work together for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. And in this God of mountains, a melt before you. If this earth is upheld by your hand, we know that you are in control of it all. So we can thank you and we can praise you in the hardest times. And I pray that we just yield, that we submit, that we surrender everything to you so that you can get the glory, so that you can get the honor. And in Jesus' name. I guess uh, while worship team, can you turn me back on? While worship team is getting set up here, um, man, make this a regular practice. You know, again, as, as, as we've said before, we have Sunday, we have Wednesday, but every morning, every night, man, even at work, it is a time of prayer. And what I'll even challenge you to do is when I was first starting to try, trying to get into a prayer habit is there would be a day um, where I would just focus on one section of that. So for instance, with praise, man, maybe make one day a P and don't ask God of anything. And maybe just say, hey, the entire uh, day today, because it's so easy. We go into his throne room and we're like, we want this, we want this, we want this, we want this. It's like, hold on. Man, do we know who we're talking to? Man, in this, of course we can come into his presence. Of course we can ask for these things. But have you ever just spent a day of just praising God without asking of anything? So I'm going to challenge you to try that. Maybe five days this week or maybe even four. Um, it's P-R-A-Y and then spend the other days just hanging out and praying. But worship team, if you guys want to lead us in worship. All right, let's stand as we close our celebration today and just sing this benediction over each other and over our church.
Thank you.